guys, it's Kat here. Today I am doing a book haul. So I've actually been getting some books over the past month and I've just waited until I had enough. I think I have about a dozen today to go through. Um, and some of the books are from Able Books, which is an online um, bookstore that will ship used books internationally and it's pretty much the cheapest for me in Japan. And then there's, I got some from Japanese bookstores and then a friend in Japan also gave me some. So today I have about a dozen of these beautiful little books to get to. Oh, some of them aren't that little. Actually, some of them you could kill people with probably. So yeah, let's just get into it. So first I ordered The Bastard of Istanbul by Elif Shafak. And the cover is just gorgeous first off. So I don't know if you can see. It's like blue with like black, pink, and gold embossed. It's not usually what I would read. I don't really like family dramas, but this is the May book club pick of the month for Hiroshima City. It follows the history of Istanbul and um, as it has been conquered by different people and also um, how the women react to a changing Istanbul where uh, they don't have to cover themselves anymore and they can uh, pursue different jobs. Some, one of them is a tattoo artist, one of them is like an oracle slash soothsayer. So I think it will be interesting. I don't know if I will enjoy it. I'm not a huge fan of family sagas. If you have read it, let me know, but oh, I don't know. Yeah, so moving on. So the next book in the haul that I got is Solus by um, Gail Carriger. Carriger? And this deals with a woman named Alexia. And on the back of the book, it says she has no soul. She is in London and that there's, it's all about social etiquette and there's vampires and werewolves and um, she has a special power. And I think that the right, just from, just from reading the synopsis on the back of the book, it seems like it's very self-aware and very witty and like self-deprecating. And I think it will be very funny. And also, I just want to read the author blurb because the blurb also sounds the same way that she writes. I think that the author probably writes exactly like how she sounds in real life. So it says, Gail Carriger writes to cope with being raised in obscurity by an expatriate Brit and an incurable curmudgeon. She escaped small town life for Europe and inadvertently acquired an education. Cute. She now resides in the colonies with a harem of Armenian lovers and tea imported from London. So I think that... It's going to be great fun and I cannot wait to read it. So the next book I picked up was The Heart Goes Last by Margaret Atwood. And I'm a huge Atwood fan. I've read a lot of her works. Oryx and Craig is one of my favorite books of all time. And The Handmaid's Tale is also just amazing. And this is one of her more recent releases. There's overpopulation and the world has gone to pot. And people can't afford to keep their houses anymore. They can't afford to keep stable jobs. So the government comes up with a way to fix that. Where half of the time you live in prisons. And then the other half of the time, you are out in the house. But when you switched, people that lived in the house switch into prison. So you're living a dual life where someone is sharing the same spaces as you, but like not at the same time. It's a really intriguing concept. So the other thing to note is that um, the inside cover is... I don't know whether I th should think it's adorable or creepy. Um, because it's Atwood, I'm going to say that the teddy bears are probably going to be creepy. Um, Another author, I would be like, oh, it's cute, it's teddy bears, but Atwood, so probably creepy. But anyway, I am so excited to read this book. Um, I thought, I think that it got uh, kind of mediocre reviews, which is why it's not more famous being an Atwood book. I've been meaning to read it for a while, and then I was like, ah, I should just do it. Uh, yeah, so I am excited to finish this up for this month and tell you guys about it. Okay, so the next book I picked up was Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance by Robert M. Piersig. I don't know a lot about this book except for the fact that uh, it is like a bestseller and a lot of people have read it. And I guess it's about a guy who's going through a lot of stuff in his personal life and then he turns to uh, Buddhism and exploring uh, Buddhist culture and ideas, but also in the framework of real life. So he's not just reporting it dryly. I think that a lot of the stuff is quite real and could be applied to real life. So I'm really interested to see how it goes. And also the cover is just amazing. It looks like some sort of psychedelic trip. Yeah, 
So, love the bubble letters, love the colors. So, Buddhism plus motorcycles, I'm intrigued. So, yes, I'm quite looking forward to this. Um, yeah. Let me know, has anyone else read this one? It's been around for a long time, and I'm just really intrigued, and I hope that it is clever and teaches me something that I don't know in a way that um, is not dry. So, yeah, I'm excited about that. The next two books that I got, you could murder people with. So, number one is The Red Queen by Victoria Aviard. So, it's a used book, and it's like a little dirty on the end, which is so sad, but oh well, it costs like $3, so it's fine. Um, it's a world that is divided by blood, red, and silver. So, the reds are the basic commoners, basically like the peons, and then the silvers are the gifted, godlike superpower people. So, it follows a girl named Mare, and she is a red, but then she finds out, uh, something happens, and she finds out that she has a power that these silvers are interested in. So, she goes to the court, and they decide to hide her in plain view by betrothing her to one of these silver princes. So, already I'm very intrigued. I mean, it doesn't sound like such an original concept in YA, like, oh, it's the chosen one, and oh, look, there's factions, and one has superpowers, one doesn't, and oh, she's betrothed to the prince. I'm shocked. I think it should be really entertaining, and I've kind of picked up the number one in all the tril YA trilogies around, which leads me to the next book, which is one of the most beloved, I think, on booktube of YA circles, and it's Clockwork Angel, the first in the Infernal Devices by Cassandra Clare. And so, actually, I just finished this book the other day, and it is quite a thick book. So, I was reading it at work during my lunch break, and I work with uh, Japanese co-workers, and so they were like, oh, Clockwork Angel, what is clockwork? Do you know how hard it is to describe what clockwork means to someone? I'm like, made of clocks, made of machines, and then they're like, oh, it's a machine angel, and I was like, yeah, no, not really, but Kind of. Yes, yeah, so you follow Tessa as she moves through the magical underbelly of London, and then there are the shadow hunters who hunt the people who break the laws of the magical realm. And so I'm really intrigued by it, and I have finished the first one, and I will definitely be reviewing it in my wrap up this month. So yeah, please look forward to that. So the next two books that I'm going to talk about were given to me by a really good friend named Kismet, and they, she, I was just checking out her bookshelves, you know, as you do when you go to a friend's house. Um, and I was like, oh, can I borrow this book? And she's like, you can have them. And I was like, what? Amazing. So, yes, I got two books from her. The first is Room by Emma Donahue. And it follows a boy named Jack. He was raised in one room, and he has never left the room. So, I think it is a look on child abuse, what it means to be a family, and I know that this book has a lot of dark themes and that it explores the relationship between a wife and um, a mother and her child. I've been meaning to read it for a while and when she had it I just was really excited that she gave it to me so I can't wait to read it. I'll probably be reading it in either this month or the month after next month, so July. Because next month is my, I'm going to do Japanese June, which leads me to the other book, the book that I was asking her to borrow, which is A Tale for the Time Being by Ruth Ozeki. So this book was really popular and it has really great reviews. And basically, um, it says in, on an island in the Pacific Northwest, a bunch of um, Japanese items wash ashore, a Hello Kitty lunchbox and a diary, and they are remnants from Japan's 2011 tsunami that have been washed across the ocean. And so the person in the story is drawn into the mystery of the little girl who owned the items, her fate. So I think it should be really interesting and explore themes of loss and grief, but also exploring Japan's history and the fallout from a tsunami. I've never read anything about the damage that a tsunami has done before. And it was a finalist in 2013 for the Man Booker Prize. So obviously it has some really great reviews and I cannot wait to read it. And also the cover is just stunning. Um, I don't think she watches these, but yep, thanks Kizzy. Um, okay, and the last books that I have to talk about are a bunch of books that I got at local Japanese bookstores. So one of the bookstores is called Book Off, and it is not only about books, they sell a bunch of things like action figures, clothing, CDs, electronic goods. Basically it's a secondhand store for like basically anything that's not food. 
And so they have a tiny, tiny English book section, and it's just complete random luck about what is there. So I check it out every few months to see like what uh, tourists have dropped and if there's anything cool. So I picked up three books from there this month. The first one is The Rosie Project by Graham Simpson, and I have read this book and it is just so adorable. It follows a man named Don Tillman, and he is very much a scientist and his mind works very very scientifically. He's always weighing his actions and the, like, the perfect way to proceed and what would be most beneficial and what what he thinks would be the correct way to act in a certain situation according to moral guidelines, but like he can't read social cues, and so he's just kind of well-intentioned but socially inept and he is trying to find a wife because he says well I'm a great physical specimen nothing is wrong with me I have a solid job I'm physically at peak condition so obviously like he just doesn't really understand but he's having tough luck with women as you do when you are like that so he decides to do something called the wife project and he creates a questionnaire which they have included so helpfully in the back of the book so like it's a huge <laughs> questionnaire and he makes the women who are interested in him take the questionnaire and then he rates them and says like like yes or no and you know funny enough no one can pass his questionnaire and so a friend of his from work suggests that he goes on a date with a woman and then the woman is just at the antithesis of everything he's looking for so it is just an adorable, adorable story. And then on the other side of the spectrum, in the Rando bookstore, um, The Lusts of the Libertines by the Marquis de Sade. Yes, this is the de Sade from BDSM. As you can see, this is not an appropriate book for me to take to school. Lust for evil. Okay, so it says... Okay. Well, okay. It says, he used to revel in merely slapping a whore's face. Now, as a mature man, he prefers to twist her head right around until it stares backwards. Mm -hmm. That's just the intro line. The circle of manias, the circle of excrement, the circle of blood. Three gateways to a living hell envisioned by the Marquis de Sade as he simmered in the bowels of the Bastille. An infernal zone where libertines are free to pursue and execute their every caprice, no matter how depraved or inhuman. Here in a brand new explicit translation are the 447 complex criminal and murderous lusts of the libertines as documented by Sod in his accursed atrocity bible, The 120 Days of Sodom. A catalog of debaucheries, cruelties, and pathological perversions still unequaled in the annals of transgressive literature for adult readers only. So yeah, this bookstore had both of these at the same time next to each other. The Rosie Project, which is adorable, and um, The Lust of the Libertines, which is obviously perverse and crazy. And the last thing that I got at that bookstore is um, actually not a book, it is a manga. I absolutely love the works of Miyazaki, and one of the first uh, movies he ever made was Nausicaa of the Valley of the Winds, which if you haven't seen it, you should check it out immediately, because it is, oh my god, amazing. So. It follows a girl named Nausicaa, and she's from a small valley, and there is a sickness that is going around in the world and causing poison spores, um, and she's trying to get to the bottom of it as well as save her Valley of the Winds from invaders. So this is actually the manga from the movie, and it was made in 1984, and so I will just show you some pictures. So like this. This is actually, it has English bubbles. I almost didn't pick it up because I thought, I just assumed that it would be Japanese, but I, but I was like, oh, maybe it'd be fine because it's in the English section and I'm so glad I checked it out because it totally is in English, so that's great. Yes, so like I said, Nausicaa of the Valley of the Winds is one of my favorite animated movies of all time and it preceded all the other Ghibli works. The movie, the money that they actually made from the film funded the creation of Studio Ghibli. So if you like Studio Ghibli, then you should definitely check out Nausicaa of the Valley of the Winds because it is, it is the first one, and also it made all the other dreams possible. Howl's Moving Castle wouldn't be around, uh, Princess Mononoke wouldn't be around, so yeah, if you want to give credit where it is due, definitely check out Nausicaa of the Valley of the Winds. Either read it or watch it. Um, they're both amazing. Um, okay, and the last book for this giant haul is The Vegetarian by Han Kong. This book I picked up from Kinokunya, which is a bookstore in downtown Hiroshima. 
next to the Sogo building. This book I bought new just because I was dying to read this book. Um, if you are unfamiliar with it, it actually won the Man Booker International Prize last year in 2016, and it follows a woman in South Korea as she deals with what society expects of her and how she should act and what it means to take control of yourself and your body and your own space. And this book is really intriguing to me because I lived in South Korea before Japan for two years as a woman and as a vegetarian. So a lot of things in this book I think I will find really engrossing and I'm I'm really interested to see if they ring true or not. So. Yes, this wraps up my book haul. I am so excited about many of these books. A few of them I have already read, a few of them are I am currently reading. So I ha am having an amazing reading month right now. So please check out my wrap up at the end of the month. I will have a ton of books to talk about. And yes, thank you so much for watching. Please let me know if you've read any of these, if you're intrigued by any of them, if you want a buddy read, I'm more than down. Um, I already have two buddy reads scheduled for next month, but I'm always looking for more, and I hope you have a most amazing day, and I will talk to you later. Bye! See you!